Hey everyone, welcome to Reading the Green and our Golf DFS show. My name is Mike. I'm joined with Kyle and Jordan on Tuesday, May 10th. We have our AT&T Byron Nelson preview. We'll recap the Wells Fargo Championship and uh, and probably just jump right into things here. Kyle's got a precious hockey game that he wants to get back to. I mean, we all do, but that he <laughs> wants to get back to here, the, the Wild and Blues Game 5, so... Uh, warning that that is going on right now uh, on screens in our various recording locations so that we might be interrupted with some action. Yeah, big oh, wait, game. Did, did we start? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was watching the game. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're uh, going to be distracted. That's OK. That's I did okay. hear on KFan on the way back from the circus that I was just at. I, I haven't paid attention to any of the other hockey. Six of the eight series are tied 2-2 two, two going into yeah. game five. That's crazy. Which, which votes well for our uh, showdowns on DraftKings, Mike. <laughs> we a lot, get a lot of games. <laughs> yeah, we're we're doing a lot like of games. the 75 showdown, 75 game showdown challenge or something for a bunch of grounds. Just, yeah, it makes the other yeah. series more fun. Yeah, it is. It's been an interesting first round of playoffs. Like there hasn't been like I guess there's been a really low number of overtime games. There's been a ton of goals scored. There's been a bunch of blowouts. Um, it's been an interesting NHL season so far. Not speaking why we're here. <laughs> speaking of goals, I could use a couple more wild goals right now. I know Kyle's working on a single game parlay, a three legged single game parlay that he's already hit one leg on. And he's uh, he's itching to cash that ticket. So we'll kind of we'll kind of keep an eye on that as we go here. We need a couple more things to happen. So, um, all right. So we'll we'll keep moving along just so that we can uh, we can get back to the hockey game. I'm the only one with a beer tonight, but I will show off my barrel theory crawler. This is a uh, this is a the DDH Stratosphere. It's a single hop uh, strata beer from Barrel Theory, a favorite of the podcast. Um, I really like. You know, single hop beers are really fun every now and then, right? Because you really get to, like, see how that hop comes through. And I think, like, you know, Fair State does a single hop strata that's always, always really good. And uh, mm -hmm. so this one, this one's uh, excellent. I'm, I'm pretty got, jealous. I've got the modest, you know, they do their liquid mm -hmm. uh, crystal. crystal. This year, this year it's the El Dorado. It's tasty. Yeah, I think I had that one. Yeah, they, they do a good job with that single hop one. Yeah, because yeah, they've had the liquid strata crystal before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is their fourth one, I think, that they've done. It must be single hop varietal time of year, right? If It must be. I don't know. I, out, I, just put one out. I sent you guys that picture of me buying a four pack of King Sue this past weekend because, like I said, sometimes you have to go back to just remember, are your favorites still your favorites? And uh that one is and that's a that's a single hop citra beer and it just is uh so easy to go back to delicious tough, well, tough to beat that one cheers with my uh aquafina i got in front of <laughs> and my water all right um well we'll jump into the wells fargo recap um actually turned out to be a, a pretty good tournament um the weather was awful uh it reminds me of or it makes me remember that, like, I'm really happy that I don't play professional golf for a living, right? That I don't have to play on weekends like that. No, I'm just kidding. I wish I was playing professional golf for a living. <laughs> I was going to say, the <laughs> the weather I've played in this year so far hasn't been great. So Right. Um, I, I do love it on the PGA Tour when you have, you know, a 50-degree morning and they're dressed like it's 20 out there. Yeah, it was it wasn't good, which means the grounds crew must have done a really good job because they didn't seem like there was a single delay the whole weekend, which made it nice from a viewing perspective that we didn't have to get held up. And my DraftKings app was updating nicely throughout the weekend and there wasn't all these these big breaks. Um, but I was I was happy to see Max Homa win. I mean, he's just uh, he's such a fun guy to have on the PGA Tour. He never takes things too seriously. He's obviously a thrill on social media. Um but man, his game looked really good. And a lot of guys that were on him, our experts that were on him leading up to the weekend said, hey, all he needs to do is putt well. Like he's hitting the ball so good the last handful of weeks. He just needs to have a good week putting and it's going to happen. And the dude was making everything inside of 10 feet. So I'm really happy to see him get it done. 
Yeah, uh, Sunday was fun. Uh, there were so many two-shot swings, and the one that really sticks out to me was actually the one that didn't happen, talking about Homa making everything. He he scrambled for a, a, a par. I want to say it was, mm-hmm. what, 18-footer? He dropped something like that. And, and Bradley had a eight foot birdie and, and Bradley missed it. That was, that was a huge swing there. That could have been a two shot uh, yeah. once we had three or four already in the round, but I, I was okay with home and winning. Uh, Bradley not though, as a outright ticket holder kind of stunk. Also <laughs> had a Cameron young outright ticket. So, Hey, two second place doesn't go far and damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. I needed uh we'll get to the we'll get to the listening league results, but I really needed a good Sunday from Bradley and I did not get it either. Um but you, question for you, you guys. You missed Mike, you missed his damn it there. It wasn't about golf. Oh, oh the blues scored. I wasn't looking. Okay. Yeah, I did miss that. <laughs> Just mid sentence, damn it. <laughs> well, there we go. The the blues did score and tie it up two two. This will be irrelevant for anyone listening on Wednesday. Um yeah. but I do have a question on Max Homa. So he's he's won four PGA Tour events, no, no majors, but but four tour events. Wells Fargo twice, although not the same course. The Riviera, obviously a good tournament. Um, where do you put him? Like, who's who are his peers on the PGA Tour? Jordan, you were all over him this week. I know you liked him uh, in our picks last week, but he's obviously not Rom and DJ or Scotty and and Jordan Spieth. Like, he's not there, but where does he fit? He kind of, to me, he kind of feels like a Sam Burns uh, type. I don't know who else I'd throw in that category, but like sort of like a second tier at this point. But is he, has he replaced Scotty as the, one of the better people, young guys to not win a major, right? Scotty is now out of that. Zalatoris is probably, you know, somewhat leading. Zalatoris is leading the way of, of players that haven't won a tour event. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Burns comp. Uh, the thing about Homa is, yeah, he has four wins, but he has been awful in majors. I think mm-hmm. I heard on one of the pods today in 12 appearances, he has not finished better than tied for 35th. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of missed cuts in there. So it's it, that's a big deal for me, I guess, to put him higher up. Uh, yes, the Riviera win was a nice field, but... Yeah, I need to see some more something more from uh, majors. But at this point, Burns, I think he threw out maybe Hovland too. At this point, you know, showing up in some of those lower events that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, he's definitely been very open about his his confidence and his mental health and all that, and and that it really was just a matter of him showing up and acting like he belonged there. And and like I said, he was he was tough in a, in a tough tough course and tough conditions. He yeah. he played really well, so. Um, listener league. Oh, Kyle, Kyle, one more comment on, uh, on the finish. Well, yeah, I was just going to say it's crazy. I I didn't see a breakdown of this, but I would be curious if anyone has one of the points scored relative, uh, for Thursday relative to the rest (laughs) of the week. I just cause you had, what was the best round on Thursday? Eight under. Mm -hmm. And look at the scores that won. No, I know. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, I, I, I was complaining to you guys that I, you know, we were looking at the, the cut sweats, you know, cut sweats, uh, account on Twitter. They, they do a nice job of keeping us informed on, uh, especially with DFS on, on percentage of players making the cut, uh, in lineups. And I felt pretty good in my GPP core that I had made five, I had five players make the cut. And I ended up cashing one of 20 lineups in a 20 max contest. And I mean, Kyle, you said that you know, most of those points, you know, must've been scored on Thursday that I didn't score. And then I just had a couple awful, awful weekends. Like I had layered and answer. I think both shot like plus 12 on the weekend. Like it was just, it was bad luck, even though I had a lot of players in the mix. Yeah. Answer back to back plus six has got me as well. Uh, (laughs) Just that would add a little wrinkle to the event, you know, but like you said, overall, uh, it went pretty well. Yeah. Who was it was it was a Domin that was minus six yeah. first day, <laughs> plus five, plus four, right? Just like yeah, he finished. He ended up finishing. I think it's because he didn't wear his bucket hat, and I was really disappointed. Like he's made for playing in the rain, wearing that bucket hat, and he didn't even wear it. So, um, 
Reading the Green Listener League, uh, JY Sodi hangs on for the win. I I finished in second. I'm I'm a little bummed. I thought I could chase him down. I was one player short. Keegan Bradley was the difference maker and did not get me there. Uh, but that's okay. Good job, JY Sodi, calling his name out a lot the last handful of weeks. And G Bentley finishing in third, also on a nice run. So, look, I said a couple of weeks ago I was going back to basics. I was going to pick players from my player pool. And look at this. I, I, I climbed out of the basement, and I'm making money again in RTG. Yeah, unlike JY Sodi, we called your name for something other than embarrassing uh, performance this week, Mike. <laughs> so Jordan and I were fourth and fifth as well so just outside there so pretty pretty strong performance overall by the crew well we talked about this kyle um and jordan uh, off offline a little bit but from a model perspective at our really the 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 cohort of players that we really like to look at are players that garner 25 percent of the expert conversation or more and this week we had all 12 of players that fit that cohort made the cut and usually that's like that's where I hammer my my cash lineups looking for safe plays. And so I rolled in my my cash lineups this week because I had six of six cuts across the board. Um, and so that was a really nice metric for our model to have this week. And and I'm and it's been encouraging. That's a trend. We've been we've been 85 percent on average the last, I think, 10 events uh, in that in that uh, cohort. And so that's something that I'm really going to be looking for, especially going into a big week. Uh, at the PGA Championship and trying to lean on that a little bit, but it was a, it was a really good week for the RTG model. Same for me in cash, yeah, uh, and cashed a couple GPP lineups as well, but I usually try to pivot a little bit, play a little game theory in those. But yeah, overall, one of the better cash weeks we've had this season. Yep. Yes, I I held on Lahiri. I was texting you guys. I need him not to bogey eighteen, <laughs> and I was going to be in the money. Because I was, he was the only, I had no one else around me had any holes left. And I was in by like one point, right? <laughs> and if he would have gotten a bogey, he would have dropped down a spot mm. and gotten a bogey. So I would have been out of the money. And then that sexy man part it. I was pulling for him. I, I want to see him get it done. Journeyman, he's going to, he's going to, he's having a nice spring and I want to see him uh, figure one out here. But yeah. Um, so yeah, so yeah, good week. Like I said, good week across the board. Um I think there wasn't in uh, one more thing on the cuts there. It was a pretty, I think there's a pretty low number of players made the cut too. I think it was right around 65 total players made the cut. So um, it was just, again, that's why we, I think our lineup stood out this week is because the, the model had some really nice plays, pretty safe plays um, for that matter. All right. Anything else on the Wells Fargo? Otherwise we'll, we'll take a break and we'll, we'll get on with the, the Byron Nelson. Nope. Nope. All good. Want to get back to some hockey? I know you do, Kyle. I know that that game is calling your name. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, you needed Kyle for your single game parlay. You needed that St. Louis goal because you got to get to you got to get the over six and a half. So you got to get goal scored. Yeah, I need. Well, I really could use a wild goal here to end the second period. Uh, so hopefully I got something to cheer about right when we get back. All right. All right. We'll take a break and uh, we'll come back and talk about the Byron Nelson. Hey everyone, welcome back. We have our AT&T Byron Nelson preview. Real quick, we do have the Reading the Green Listener League available on DraftKings. Look for the link to join that on Twitter sometime on Wednesday. Love to get a few more people in playing DraftKings PGA DFS with us ahead of the PGA Championship so we can fill out that contest uh, certainly next week. Um, Take real money out of our pockets. We have a ton of fun getting to know people uh, and it's it's a good time each week. So, at t Byron Nelson, this tournament has bounced around courses a little bit the last handful of years. They've settled. I think they have a five-year contract at TPC Craig Ranch in McKinney, Texas. Last year, KH Lee won at minus 25. Um, yes, minus 25. So we are back to seeing uh, a birdie fest. And I don't know if that makes this a straight-up putting contest, but what I do know is that this course really sets up well for what we'll call track man golfers. So golfers that really like the, the players that can just hit the same shot over and over again, right? Hit, 
It doesn't really matter which way it goes. It doesn't need a ton of creativity. There's not a lot of trouble out here. Big fairways, big greens. Hit the shots over and over again. Make a few putts, and that's what's going to do well. So, um, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll probably check it out a little bit <laughs> through the week, but not something I, I'm really kind of saving my, my golf viewing for the PGA Championship. Good field, though. Right? Yeah. Good field. Yeah, strong field overall. And, you know, I will be curious if this year plays maybe a little tougher. Last year, uh, when he scored 25 under, as you mentioned, but it was a very wet event. Uh, so they also had a lot of long approach shots because they didn't get a lot of the rollout, but the greens were super soft. And, you know, after they kind of ran reckless on the course last year, maybe they try to set it up a touch tougher. I don't know how much they can. But if I if I had to take the over under on winning score, I'm going to go slightly under 25. I don't mm-hmm. think we're in a tournament of champions or Sony Open mm-hmm. situation here. The uh, well, and it's a Texas course, so you like you'd expect it yeah. to be dry and windy. So a wet court like that is unusual. That's a fair point that we could see that be a little lower. But again, this is a this is a TPC course that I think is pretty forgiving off the tee and pretty forgiving into the green, and so that's what we're going to get. For sure. Going to be different than last week. And, uh, you know, a different, I guess I heard kind of the Mexico course is uh, one of the comps, but kind of different from a lot of the courses we've had recently. I liked your take, Kyle, that a number of the players in the field this week, uh, a number of the stars are guys that haven't played in a few weeks, maybe didn't make the trip down to Mexico. And so wanting to get that tune up ahead of next week in Southern Hills is adding to the strength of this field. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's been talked a little bit about proximity to where Southern Hills is for the next week's event. Some people dismiss that, but I, I think there is a lot to that just from a standpoint of, hey, you a lot of these guys were playing Southern Hills the last two days mm-hmm. and are just going to quick, you know, the 30 minute flight in their private jet down for, to play for the weekend and then be right back. Uh, so I, I think that helps, as you said, uh, you know, not having as strong a schedule here lately. Some of these guys want to get a warm up and then where things are. And hey, I'm not complaining. I, I like the strength of the field this week. All right. So that being said, um, what is going on in the RTG model this week? Top of the top of the model. Who's getting the most love? Yeah, right now we have Will Zaltoris coming in at 61 percent mention share. Uh, strong MPI of 53. And then uh, also a couple of his higher priced uh, people with them is Justin Thomas at 57% mention share and Scotty Scheffler, 47% mention share. Uh, you're going to have to choose there because Will's 9,400, JT's at 10.6, and Scotty at 10.9. Uh, so obviously you're going to have to. You make a choice, maybe one or two of those, and, and go down board from there. But the good thing is we do have some value plays coming in right behind them on the mention share standpoint. You have Pat Kazire at 7,100, uh, garnering 50, 47% mention share right now. And then you also have Kurt Kitayama popping up around 42% mention share at 7,400. Yeah, great points. It's uh, I, I think it's... uh. The pricing seems a little soft. I mean, I mean, I know in stronger fields, that is generally what happens. You see your top talent end up a little bit further down because there's just there's more talent on the on the board here. Um, but Scotty Scheffler, not even at 11K. I mean, a 10.9, but not even above 11K. So um, it's interesting what we'll be able to fit together. It kind of feels like like we've been saying the last couple of weeks. Take two of your stars, two of those guys, maybe in the high nine or 10 K range and then pound value in the the seven K and maybe low eight K range. Yeah. Again, there's a lot of guys alike in the seven and to your point on some of the pricing looking a little funny, you know, there's some guys that I think are in the like Kurt Kitayama, who's been on a tear is 7,400. And then you have guys in the eight K range that. You know, it just it seems a little bit off. And I think some of that's maybe from the delay because we've had guys pop multiple weeks in a row, but they're still being priced uh, like they were maybe pre-masters. So it's a little bit of a different week from a price perspective. 
it the the one that stuck out to me um and he's he's a little bit further down um around uh looks like 19 percent mention share right now but austin smotherman's a guy i've been playing don't bring up tom hoagie mike (laughs) i'm not bringing i'm I'm not bringing up tom hoagie right now i can i can wait for my picks to bring up tom hoagie um (laughs) But, like, I've been playing a bunch of Austin Smotherman the last couple of weeks. He's been getting a lot of love from experts, and all of a sudden now he's 6,600. Um, and so I can't tell if he's still a, a flyer that I want to take almost because of the name recognition, and it feels like a great price, but it's also a much different event than uh, Mexico or even last week he made the cut at, at Wells Fargo. I was curious if you were going to say uh, the same one I was, uh, which was not, but Mark Leishman is the one that really popped out to me at, at 7,800. You know, that mm-hmm. it just felt low, and granted, he he hasn't been playing as much, you know, in some of these other events, but... Uh, you know what yeah. it is. Did You saw what happened last, last week, right? Straight up, Hazel shanked a ball out of a bunker that just about killed one of his playing partners... Uh, in the first round after he had made, after he had made like four birdies in a row and he was three under for the tournament, he just hosled one across the green into the water and made a quad. And then that shook him and he just fell apart. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah. Um, anyways. Okay. So that, I mean, yeah, I, I really like, this feels like a good mix. Again, we're talking about that, that 25% range for us being so good. Um, and looking at this, it feels like you're going to be able to make a hand, a handful of good lineups out of the value we see there. Um, yeah, do you want to but, give? Go ahead, Jordan. I was going to say, Mike, you were talking earlier about Scotty and fitting him in. Like, yeah, so he's the highest, obviously, 10-9. But, like, out of the others, like, you're not going to take Spieth for mm-hmm. only $800 less. Right? You're not going to take DJ for $700 less. No, it really is right, between right. Scotty and JT of like, yeah. and, and Scotty certainly has the hot hand. JT's played well, but it feels like a good price for Scheffler, just given the, the streak that he's on. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely hard to uh, the fade Scotty <laughs> because we, we've tried how many times here the last couple months and it but just you, hasn't worked out. If uh, you believe if you believe he's going to win the PGA at his favorite golf course, Southern Hills, <laughs> is he also going to win the Byron Nelson the week before? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be madness but i'm gonna say no and i i am gonna start with jt at the top of the board uh my default this week is going to be form because there's only been the one time at this course we don't know a ton about it and just being the week before the master or uh, before a major there's just a little bit of unknown there for some motivation right but jt talking about form this is since november third fifth fifth 20th eighth sixth 33rd third eighth 35th he is going to win and he's going to win soon and i'm going to try to be on him when he does that's a great take it's a great take and and the the thing is basically like he hasn't really putted well any of those weeks so that's what you want is you want a guy that hasn't really putted well and hitting the ball great and all of a sudden a few putts go in and and he's at the top of the the leaderboard at the end of the day so yeah and that's Hold something a lot of the experts talked about a week like this, where it's going to be low scores. You just need someone <clears throat> that has the ability to get very high with the putter and St. Louis scored. So that was a grunt there. So yeah. go ahead. Jordan. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you, cause I was do- researching last year at the tournament. Wh- what name did you say? At a lo- what do you mean? Who are you just talking about? Justin Thomas. No, JT, okay. That's I was just I I was looking yeah. up some numbers from last year while you were talking and I missed the name. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, who else, Kyle? Who else is going to fit into your uh, kind of the core of your lineups this week? Back to the theme there of form, uh, I, and I hope I didn't miss the boat here. Uh, but Kurt Kitayama, I haven't been playing him. He's played very well at a uh, you know a couple different types of courses. Great iron player. Uh, I'm going to have some of him this week. You got to at, you know, 7,400 and where how much mention share he's getting at 42%. Uh, so he will definitely be part of my lineups. And then lastly, I'm going to I'm gonna play a little Taylor Gooch at 8,600. That price point is probably going to have to be a little bit more of a balanced approach. So maybe some of the cash lineups. But he's getting 33% mention share, 
third on that MPI. And the last time we saw him was at the Masters, where he came in 14th. Nice, good stuff. Good picks. Jordan, you were uh, you were pulling some lineups together. What did you uh, would you come up with? Uh, yeah, you mean four minutes ago? I was pulling some lineups together. Correct. Um, you know, I'm. Yeah, the last couple of weeks I've been right in that, you know, all mine have been that 7,500 to like 8,000 range. Um, and the first lineup I put together here, I've only got, uh, what is this, $1,900 spread from top to bottom. Mm, so if very you, balanced. And six, there's six out of our top 11 people in the model. Uh, so, I, you know, I skipped over JT and Scheffler and went with Zalatoris. Uh, you know, wanted him to, to, to lead us off. Uh, and then I've, you know, I've liked, uh, liked my Keith Mitchell lately. You know, he's, he's my low point. So there's my high of Will and my low of Keith Mitchell, who's at 28% mention share. Uh, and my, you know, I'm listening to our model guys. If you're above 25% mention share, what was it? 85% of the time mm -hmm. they, they make the cut. So I'm going only in, bet in between there. Uh, and then my last one here uh, is Mr. Jonathan Vegas. He just keeps seemingly get getting it done. Uh, he's 12 out of his last 15 cuts. I don't think he's going to win it, but I don't need him to win it. I need him to make the cut and get me some points on the weekend. So let me um, – I like – so at this point, you guys have named all the uh, named all the players that I that I also like. But I'm glad you, I'm Jordan. I'm glad that you that you brought up Jonathan Vegas because I'm trying to look back. I, if somebody made a good point um, that was on him this week. It might have been Rick Gaiman. Um, but, you know, Vegas has had some very strong form lately. And and I think that's what you and I think his point was. That's what you want out of Jonathan Vegas. He plays the best when he gets on a roll. He is on a roll. And he's very reliable when he is not on a roll. <laughs> he he doesn't just like randomly show up one week. Like it takes him a while to get it going again. So um, yeah. he, was the ball right off the he was top 10 here last year as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's uh, that's very reliable. 8,400 feels about right. Maybe a little high for him, that's... but I, I think he's a very safe play. I certainly could rely on him in a cash lineup and um yeah, I like that. So yeah, good good mentions across the board. I like Kurt Kitayama as well, Kyle. I, I know that he's been putting great. And so hopefully that hangs on for another week. I think seventy four hundred dollars is a you were gonna need some of the value play here. And he's you know, why not put it on him? He's been playing great the last couple of weeks. Who do you got, Mike? Well, I as I said, I had I, I really like JT, Zalatoris, and Kitayama. Um no, I don't really no know hobby. who else to who else to throw in there. I I, I don't want to I don't want a hard fade Scotty, but I, I feel like JT's hungry. JT's hungry to, to get a W, and I think he'd, he'd certainly benefit a lot from getting a W this week heading into uh, an important week next week. So um, I want to put my money behind behind JT in a number of lineups. Two others coming in at over 40% mention share that uh, I don't believe we've mentioned yet unless I missed it. Uh, Aaron Wise and Adam had one, uh, both at you know, in the 8K range at 42%, uh, probably people uh, will sprinkle as well. I think Aaron Wise... Are you allowed to sprinkle Aaron Wise? Yes, I think uh, his <laughs> performance has returned to the point that it can't be ignored. Did I miss a goal by another goal by the Blues? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I freaking... That's why Kyle grunted on the pod. <laughs> a second time. A second time. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, um, yeah, not looking good. I wanted, uh, yeah, there's other, other, yeah, yeah. It's not looking good. It's well, I'm still, if I can just get a six, four victory by the wild here, <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that was the trick you got. You, you, uh, you had needed the six and a half. That looks like that might happen, but the wild win is not looking good. Um, tears, Kyle, uh, I want to hit on tears here before we wrap up. So distracted here by uh, by the all the goal scoring of the Blues. A crappy hockey you, player. You know, I think this week a lot of it seems to you know, shake up pretty clearly. You obviously have a choice at the top. Uh, there's there's a hammer play according to a model in tier two, but the one there is not a lot of agreement 
agreement on at this point in time is tier three. You have Neiman, you have Brooks Kepka, Tommy Fleetwood, Adam Scott. Uh, it, you know, I think it would be pretty risky to go with Kepka the weeks before a major. I, I truly think he's probably going to be looking at this as a tune up type event. Tommy Fleetwood, ha- uh, Mike, you kind of hit on that about some of the guys that have been playing well recently. Well, almost all of Fleetwood's strokes gains over the last couple of events have been around the greens, which this week, you know, we don't really care about stroke scan around the green. It's there's a lot more uh, from approach and then mm-hmm. maybe some distance off the tee. So giving those two guys, I'm going to be dismissing a, a bit. I think I'm going to go with Neiman at 19% mention share at this point in time uh, as my pick in tier three. That is, a, I'm glad you brought that up. That is kind of like a forgotten group of players here. That that tier three group, just no one's really on those guys. But in tiers, if you're going to play tiers, you got to pick one. Yeah, and I, I think it's the nature of the salaries this week, right? You get up that higher eight, lower nine range. It's going to be hard to fit those guys in if you're going two at the top above that. So I don't think you're going to have much in a classic lineup. So really, the only place I'd probably be playing those guys is is tiers. Yeah. One well, and who would yeah who would you rather have? Zalatoris, uh, Sam Burns, or Brooks Kepka. Right? Those are three salaries right next to each other. Not for tiers, but for the salaries. And, like, you're never picking Kepka in that. No. Yeah. Not not a non-major. Not, not, not in the non-major or not uh, the waste management. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is he is the definition of a guy that, like, in, in a tune-up mindset, he's there to play 36 holes. And just kind of see what he has. Like some guys, like Spieth or McElroy, they said around the um, around the Valero, they're like, "Hey, I want to get on a roll for the next ten days. I'd love to win this event and win next week too." I think Kepka is very content with thirty six holes. Make sure I'm feeling good. Get back up to you know, Oklahoma or wherever you know wherever he's going to be for the next couple of days. Yeah, don't get us wrong. He could he pop up and. And do well. Yes, I'm just not willing to bet money on that. He's not. He's not motivated. That's <laughs> that's that's for sure. Um, all right. Well, um, I know we're itching to to get to the PGA Championship, so this is just one more stepping stone um, on the way there. But we'll have uh, plenty of money on the line. Um, and I and I think I think the model's shaping up nicely. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna keep this thing rolling and have another good week. Um, any other final thoughts on on DFS this week? You know, since we started recording, uh, the Wild are down three goals to nothing. So we need to change. <laughs> we should maybe stop. Here. Yeah. So yeah, we should you guys. We stop. That's a good idea. Um, so hopefully on Wednesday, everyone's listening to this. The Wild have won five to four or six to four in uh, Kyle's case, what he's looking for. Um, <laughs> but we look forward to uh, to catching up with everyone again in a week from now. We'll recap the Byron Nelson and talk about the PGA Championship at Southern Hills. See ya.